Don't have sex, because you will get pregnant and die. Don't have sex in the missionary position. Don't have sex standing up. Just don't do it, promise? OK, everybody take some rubbers. I believe I was in fifth or sixth grade. My first experience with sexual education was when I was 11 in fifth grade. School. Back in sixth grade, they had already established the female sexual education like three times by now. The guys, this is our first time. So we were pretty excited about it. That time. I was about 10 years old, it was fifth grade. And it was not until like I got out of Catholic school and moved to Alamogordo that I received my first Sex education class. School. I was nine. It was in the fourth grade. Uh, yes, definitely. Um, I've heard that places with Lower sex education have higher rates of pregnancy, and I think that is pretty sound because a lot of people aren't going to practice abstinence, so if you teach kids just to practice abstinence, it's not going to help them much because there's a lot of them will still want to have sex, and if you just teach them abstinence and not about safe sex or, or like diseases or anything like that, they could, you know, end up not using a condom and then get a disease and get pregnant and stuff like that. I do. I think it's really important and if you do it the right way it will help students out especially I think because you know you're so young you don't really know anything at that point. A lot of parents don't tell their kids about anything. I believe sexual education should be taught in schools. It would help out with a lot of misconceptions, a lot of uh, help against the spread of diseases and even early pregnancies which would a lot of stupid babies out there nobody wants that. Uh, of course, we don't want every other town to end up like Alamogordo because we were like first uh, pregnancy rate in New Mexico for a good long time. I think yes, it should be taught in schools because people don't teach it at home because it's uncomfortable. I think it should happen more than one time. I think it should be definitely be elementary school, middle school, and high school. And I do think it should end around 14 to 15, just because you can be serious about it. And at that point, people are think are taking sex a lot more seriously. Uh, I believe sexual education should probably start around fourth grade. Honestly, it would be a good round age for kids when they start noticing themselves a little. And probably I would say like nine, just because that's when girls start hitting puberty. Yeah. I think both because people should have both options available for them and they should know the consequences and the benefits of both. Um, people are going to make their choice, so you should not just teach one and not the other. I honestly think safe sex should be the one that's taught in schools, only because abstinence is more of like, you know, you go to church, you'll hear that, you go to your parents, you'll hear abstinence more, but, you know, safe sex needs to be a very broad and a very detailed thing that people understand because contraceptives are very important and you know you know you don't want to get pregnant you don't want diseases and kids need to know that especially in high school it's the beginning of their lives why do they need you know the stress and the added stress of like knowing that oh something could go wrong and I think that's like why we need to know safe sex more than abstinence because you know anyone can not have sex but it not many people know how to have safe sex so that's kind of really what it is uh, safe sex should be taught in schools 
but I think abstinence should be taught as a choice. Pertaining to homosexuality or bisexuality? No, being from a very small Christian town, they never really taught, touched up on that or anything. Heard about it in church, heard it was the devil's work. No, actually no, they didn't teach me anything about gays or bi or any of that kind of stuff. It was just mostly males and females. I was when I lived in Las Vegas, and then they talked about you know gay couples and how STDs spread with them and stuff like that, but then not when I moved to New Mexico. teach us about it. They didn't teach us about the different kinds of contraceptives like condoms and birth control and the new ring and the shot. They did provide us condoms. That was the only type of protection they did give us. But we, it was in elementary school and middle school. So. All it did was like, it was more of a contraceptive education program. It taught us how to use them and what they are, but it didn't supply them. However, it did give, like, I remember I did receive a bag of condoms, like, when I was in fifth grade, but as I said before, really, we make balloons out of them. They were not serious, and I wasn't going to use them in fifth grade anyway, so. And that's the only time I've ever received um, contraceptives from my school. We didn't have a contraceptive program. They didn't tell us about them. They just told us abstinence was the way to go. Just stick okay. with that. Um, no. In my high school and middle school did not. Might as well just say that I didn't know what condoms were until college. Um, in Las Vegas, at the health department, they had condoms, or the health center, the nurse's office, you can get condoms. Uh, yes, um, and no. Well, I did take uh, sex education in Nevada, and when I was li when I was younger, I didn't know much at all about diseases or sex or sex in general or periods or anything like that. So it did help me um, learn more about that. Even though they could have taught us a lot more, but you know, they did the best they could. I actually don't, just because I was way too young to take it seriously, and they really weren't honest with us about it. They were just like, "Oh, this is." You know, this is what can go wrong, and this is what you need to do. And they, sh they showed us like how to put a condom on a banana. That's not really cool, but it was just like, and they gave us condoms and we made balloons out of them. So it really wasn't a serious thing. If they would have given it to us afterwards, it probably would have been a little bit more helpful. Uh, I believe it was helpful for, for me. Uh, I believe it came a little late. There was a lot of things they could have really explained to me before that. You know, like wet dreams, random morning wood boners, random boners I would get in class. I never understood them. I didn't know what was going on. I really could have used a little help there. Uh, yes and no. Um, before I moved to Alamogordo, when I was in Catholic school, they told me that I'll probably just figure things out by the time I get married, and we'll have kids, and everything will be all happy dandy. And yes, because when I moved to Alamogordo, it turns out that I didn't get a girl pregnant. cannot get pregnant off a of pre-cum, but you actually can. Well, I've heard another thing that you cannot get pregnant off your period, but you can because if you have a cycle that is less than 28 days, 
and you have sex on the last day of your cycle, three days later, you could ovulate and still have sperm inside you and that egg could be fertilized. Yep. Um, a very popular misconception is that women don't have two holes in their vagina, but they actually have a urethra and they have a vaginal canal. And not a, a lot of people know that. Even some women don't know that, so that's pretty interesting. Yep. One really popular misconception I was always told was as long as the girl was on top riding cowgirl style, she was never going to get pregnant because of gravity and physics and whatnot, you know. If you pee in a girl while ejaculating in her, she won't get pregnant.